There's an aesthetic dimension to all of these questions as well. And, and a lot of people have talked about the beauty of math, the beauty of the laws of nature. And I'm, I'm wondering how far we can take that. And, and I particularly am interested in your take, Margaret, because you, you work in art. Yes, I, I do some projects at the intersection of mathematics and art. So um, personally, I find mathematics extremely beautiful. Um, but, the, you know, be beauty is a, is a very um, multivalent concept. And at least when we talk about mathematics in the world, which a lot of physicists talk about, they seem to automatically now equate the concept of beauty with symmetry. And there's an awful lot of mathematics aimed at finding what's called the symmetries between things. And symmetries become a kind of obsession, a, a beautiful obsession by modern physics and mathematics. But, you know, my... I do my art projects with my twin sister who, when we left school, I went, when after high school, I went to university and studied physics and math. She went to, uni uh, she went to art school. And um, sometimes I show, she's really into math and science, but sometimes I show her things that I think are really beautiful, that are really, you know, incredibly super symmetric things about mathematics. And she just go, looks at it and says, that's boring. Because coming from the aesthetic, World. She teaches, you know, art students about aesthetics. And in the contemporary art world, you know, symmetry is not affiliated with beauty. It's just seen as boring. And so the, the notion that beauty is universal, which is something that keeps being uttered in physics books, is just nonsense. Um, you know, there's an amazing show on that you should all go and see right now at Pioneer Works um, that is a show of Haitian art inspired by voodoo. I think it's the most drop-dead beautiful thing I've seen in a long time. There's nothing symmetrical about it. So to claim that ideas about beauty are universal just doesn't work. So I think math is beautiful, but it's certain aspects of it m may be not necessarily beautiful to other people. That said, there are lots of aspects of mathematics that are about non-symmetry and chaoticness, which are also beautiful, but in a very different way. Well, and there's also a bit of a backlash here. I mean, for instance, there's a new book by Sabine Hosenfelder, mm. Lost in Math, arguing that physics is actually stuck because it's so hung up on beauty, so hung up on, you know, looking for these elegant uh, formulas that maybe that's held the whole field back. Uh, Jim, I mean, you, you've made your name through supersymmetry, so I'm guessing you have some, some thoughts here. So I have some opinions. Uh, let me start, however, with uh, a quote, uh, it won't be precise, from Albert Einstein. And he has this interesting quote that mathematics and science, when practiced at their highest levels, coalesce in aesthetics, plasticity, and form. So the kind of beauty that people like me find in mathematics, uh, there's a story I like to tell people to try to pass along an understanding of what we're dealing with. And it goes as follows. Imagine a planet on which uh, there's no sound <laughs> at all. But there are beings of our ability that occupy this planet. And you can imagine a small group of them learning how to score music. Because after all, on our planet, we not only listen to music, we have musical scores. And so on this planet, let's imagine that's the only way that music exists. Then for those special, they might have a name, musicians, who study these arcane figures on paper. But on our planet, we also know that people who score music will tell you that they can in their mind's ear, hear the composition. So what would forbid these aliens who know how to score from experiencing that way to access music? So they would, that small group would talk about the beauty of this symbolic representation system because they're experiencing it the way that humans experience it who both score and hear it in their mind's ear. That's kind of what happens to those of us who engage in mathematics, is that we're, you know, we're, by training, accident, genetics, however, whatever the circumstances are, 
there's a notion of beauty that comes through these symbols. And I have some suspicions. I would disagree a little bit. But I have Good. Some, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're going to disagree a little bit. Uh, but I, was, I have some suspicions that part of what humans find beautiful is a reflection of the way that the circuitry up here works. That when, if you actually study the patterns of electrical flow through ba- brains, that there, it's likely, and I believe, that somehow that's what we're reflecting when we talk about a beautiful song or a beautiful picture. That it's some echo or remnants of that. So it may not be universal, but I think it is, in fact, grounded in a much deeper way than you you might think is um, a cultural uh, definition of beauty.